Happy Monday, Jocelyn Briggs here with Boundless Pursuits Coaching and Training. How are you? It's the start of a new week um, and almost the end of, an, of another month. Like I cannot believe where is the summer going. Um, and August is the beginning of a new month, which is exciting because I love new beginnings. So I wanted to talk, I've been, I've been meaning to come on here and share this with you all for several days now and life has just been crazy and I haven't had a chance to, but I wanna share with you today. I wanna to try to help simplify and bring clarity to how do I, how do I escape the diet culture? How do I stop dieting? How do I get out of this, you know, uh, hamster wheel, <laughs> get off this hamster wheel of on and off dieting trying to figure out the secret. What is the secret to change? Um, how did I get here? And how do I go backwards? And how do I undo, you know, the damage, whatever you want to call it, the, you know, what's happened over the adult years of my life? How do I, how do I get my health back? How do I get my well-being back? How do I lose the weight? How do I drop the pounds? So like, let me know in the comments if you're joining me today and you would love to know or you would love diet culture to be simplified for you because I think that, <laughs> I'm at baseball practice, I think that there's two things that we need to do before we do anything else and I think it's two things that we miss, that nobody talks about, that nobody tells us, that nobody encourages us to do. Um, I think we focus way too much of our attention on trying to figure out the best way right like we're always trying to research and keep up with with data like what's you know what's best carbs or fats am I supposed to eat carbs am I not supposed to eat carbs am I supposed to fast am I not supposed to fast um many of us don't realize that a lot of the data that comes out pertains to men and not women in fact I just listened to a podcast today that said that the most current data um indicates that women don't do well fasted. <laughs> so does that mean that every woman shouldn't fast? No. Does that mean that if fasting worked for you, you shouldn't fast? No, I'm not saying that. But fasting um, in general is not, um, it does not work well with hormones, like female hormones. It works, it works well with male hormones. But all of the studies that are done are done on men. Um, keto, like carbs, like it's been shown that women typically do better on a diet that, that does have richness in carbohydrates. Now, so does that mean you should go out and eat all the pasta and all the bread? No, like this is the problem, right? Where we are most confused as a world, as a society, as a culture, is we don't eat <laughs> the way we used to eat. So I'm gonna give you two simple things that you can follow to unlock the secrets to your health and wellness. Now, is it gonna happen overnight? No. Um, is it gonna happen as fast as if you cut out? Understand that typically when you alter your diet by cutting out, you know, like a fat or a protein or food altogether or carbohydrates, what you're actually typically doing in the beginning is you're restricting your calories. So the reason that often we get results is because we restrict calories. So I'm gonna give you two simple things. Um, and let me know, is this, would you like this intel? Um, you may not like it because it might be so simple. You're like, that can't possibly work. The first thing that I'm going to share with you that we don't do as a world, as a global culture, is we need to eat single ingredient foods. So if you could take what you're eating right now, if you could take the diet you're eating and you could cut out processed foods and you could focus your diet 80%, always 80-20 with me because let's face it, we got to have some enjoyment in life like we've got to have some treats in life um if you could focus 80 percent of your diet on rich whole foods like like here's what i'm eating for dinner now, this is my remnants of my dinner it's couscous which is a single ingredient grain and it's stir fried veggies which are single ingredient foods mixed together and i made my sauce which took me two seconds to throw into a mason jar and shake up um and i took leftover pork right so single if we as a global culture could get back to eating actual food that our body recognizes, that contains nutrients, that contains minerals, that is going to nourish your body, and you give it enough time for your body to actually reset and understand what you're putting into it. Because know that your current gut biome is 
is cater to your current diet. So if you eat a lot of processed foods and listen, I, there's no judgment here. Like I understand how we got to this place. A, they're yummy. <laughs> like the bottom line is they're yummy, but we need to stop seeing food as entertainment and we, we need to start um, eating to live, not living to eat. Like what we do is we live to eat. I live to eat. I freaking love to eat. Like I, I get it. I get, I get how easy it happens, but look at your diet and how much of your food is processed. And you might not even realize it's processed, but I'm talking about condiments. I'm talking about dressings. Even my stir fry sauce, I made it from single ingredients, right? Like five ingredients went into a jar. I shook it up and I poured on so I cannot stress this enough and I cannot share my passion <laughs> enough about how badly our world needs to do this. We need to shift back to eating real food. If you could do 80% of your diet, make 80% of your diet real food, it almost doesn't even matter what you're eating in the beginning, right? So how much processed food are you eating and how can you replace it? Granola bars, crackers, um, bear paws, um, fishes, sauces, condiments, even milk is pretty processed, yogurt, like anything that comes already made for you is processed. So how can you move your diet back to whole single ingredient foods? And it does not have to be difficult. I get it. I get it that they taste good and I get it that they're convenient. But this stir fry took me probably about 10 minutes to make, right? It takes less time than ordering a pizza because a pizza takes about 45 minutes to get there. <laughs> um, the, second, the second thing I'm gonna share with you, and, I, and I, can get, I would challenge you to do these two things for 90 days and see what, your, what happens to your body. The second thing is cut out sugary drinks. We, as a society, live off of sugary drinks. So maybe it's pop. Like, pop should stand for poison. <laughs> and I know it tastes good. I know that we enjoy it. I, I actually never did drink pop. Like that is one thing that I don't drink, but I do drink wine, which I'm cutting out for 90 days. If you want to join me in my 90 day challenge, like I would love that. But sugary drinks are pop, um, are juice. We are under the illusion that juice is healthy. Juice is a sugary drink. It's probably nearly as bad as pop in terms of it's containing sugar and not enough fiber um, and a lot of the nutrition taken out. Um, sports drinks, um, energy drinks, specialty coffees. Think about how the world revolves on basically those five things like pop, specialty coffees, sport drink, um, energy drinks, and juice, right? So if you can cut out sugary drinks and you can change your diet components to whole ingredient foods and cut out processed foods. It's the only diet you'll ever need to follow. So I think it probably sounds too simple and too, and, and too complicated at the same time. But if you need help with making this transition and you want to give it a try, like reach out in messenger and let me know. I'm, I'm happy to help you. I have a group to support what you eat. And I'm just launching a 90 day challenge. It starts August 1st. It starts on a Sunday. We're going hardcore. We're not starting till, we're not waiting till Monday. <laughs> and that's my husband's fault. I asked him, should we wait till Monday? He said, nope, the first is the first. So we start on the first. You pick any habit that you wanna commit to. So it could be a glass of water. It could be reading a page of a book every day. It could be eating breakfast every day if you're currently not a breakfast eater. It could be getting up to your alarm, like not hitting snooze six times. It could be a 10 minute walk every day. It does not matter what the habit is, but we're do gonna do it together. I'm cutting out wine and chips for 90 days, which is hard to say out loud, but I'm doing it. Um, and you don't have to go, that's a big one. You don't have to go so big. My husband is cutting out alcohol. Um, my youngest son, is his goal is to eat breakfast every day. My daughter is running 5K every day and my other two sons haven't given me their commitment yet. I have clients reading a book. I have some clients doing gratitude every day. So your habit is your choice, but if you were making it really fun, you get to register, uh, you get a bib so that you can go on social media and say, hey, I'm committing to this 90 day thing. Um, you get support, you get a group, and then we're sending out 
um, daily emails for 90 days to help support you and motivate you and encourage you. So let me know in the comments if you want to be part of that and I can send you the link to register. So thanks a lot. I hope that helps. Really think about that. You don't have to make it complicated. Two things, two changes in your life and then give it 90 days and then give it another, another 90 days. Do it for a year and see what happens to your body inside and out. It will shock you. Um, so hope that helps. Have a great night.